Ladies and gentlemen, even this morning, we welcome you to Kingdom Life Ministries International. Dr. T.S. Mligwe here. Saying welcome to our telecast. Let's study the Word of God together. And let us be prepared as we study the Word and, and get into the Word and believe the Word and act on the Word and see the results of the Word. I want you to know that the Word of God is alive and the Word of God is truth. And today I want to talk about um, despair and how to handle it. I'm talking about despair and how to handle it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in Second Chronicles, rather in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 that all things happen to all people. I want, you to, I want you to start right there. That the Bible says all things happen to all people. The Bible says the righteous and the unrighteous, the good and the bad, the ugly and the beautiful, the top and the bottom. God says things do happen to them, all things. All things would mean bad and good, good and bad. All right? Exciting things and terrible things, frightening things. They do happen to all people. Now, all people would mean everybody. Starting from the top, top, pest, top most person, the first citizen of a country, the president, going down to the nobody down the street. All things of this life can happen to them. In fact, it's not can happen, they do happen. All right? So let's look at, uh, and some of these things happening, they create despair, okay? They create despair. But when you are despaired, child of God, don't you think it's because you're not saved? You are still saved, but you are despaired. So we're, not, we're going to handle that today for you. What does the Bible say? Now, I want to look at two characters in the Bible, powerful people in the Bible, that shook the world of their time. But they were despaired at a moment of time somewhere. And let's see what happened and see what God promises to things like that. We're reading from 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter, two, chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's look at verse 6 to 8. Listen to this. The Bible says, even when, that's Paul speaking, he says, when we were weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can uh, patiently endure the same things we suffer. We are confident that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. Are you hearing that? Listen to verse 8. We think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through, we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed. And we were overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. And we thought we would never live again through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves. Hallelujah. We stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. Amen. Now watch this. Here is the greatest apostle that ever lived called Paul. The man who taught us and said we live by faith and not by sight. The man who taught us that, man, we don't, don't mind what you see. The things you see are, are just little things, you know. And don't, don't look at them. Look at the promises of God. Because this which you see is temporary. But here he is despaired. They are ministering in Asia. And the Bible says right there, he didn't tell us what, exactly what happened, but he said we were crushed. He said we were overwhelmed. Pastor, if you are overwhelmed right now, because the church is falling apart, people are living and all that, maybe the source of it is COVID or something, or maybe you made a mistake, sir. Mom, maybe you made a mistake somehow, because you're human, you're subject to error. And it just mixed, messed up the ministry. You get despaired, man. You get overwhelmed. It's normal. Daddy, maybe you did something at home. And mama says, I'm packing and I'm leaving. I'm not going to forgive you. I'm not going to stay with you. This is the end of the marriage. Mama, maybe something has happened. And daddy says, I'm leaving you. I don't want, I don't love you no more. And maybe, maybe things are just falling apart somehow. This causes 
despair. This causes a feeling of being crushed. But Paul says, ladies and gentlemen, we wish that you must also know that we men of God, we that God have used, we that are shaking the world with the gospel, we can also at a certain time be overwhelmed. We can also be crushed. And he says we were also overwhelmed. We thought we were going to die in Asia. We thought we, we thought we started to believe. We started to believe in death, not to believe in God who can save us. I think that comforts you. Well, it does comfort me that here is a man of God, Paul, man. Paul. Not some other guy, Paul. He said we were crushed. He said we were overwhelmed. And we started to believe in death. The matter of faith in our hearts was gone. We were believing this. We'll never come out of this. We're going to die here. That means he was in despair. Paul, the man of God. Let's show you another guy, another man of God. Let's leave Paul for a while. I'm coming back. But let's go down to 1 Kings. Let's go down to 1 Kings. And show you another mighty man of God who was overwhelmed who was also crushed, and who felt, my word, there's no way I'm going to go through this. We are in, 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 in 1 Kings, 2 Kings rather, and the man of God, Elijah, the previous day, actually three years ago, he prayed and he stopped the rain. Now three years later, he, he, he brought the nation together. And showed them to follow Baal was wrong. And he killed the prophets of Baal. And everybody said we are coming back to Jehovah God. He prayed and, and, and rain fell. Which he had stopped. He prayed and stopped and, and, and the fire fell. And he prayed that it must rain. And it did. I mean this, this shook the world of his day. But the following morning when he was still sleeping there. Maybe thanking God. He got a message from the, the, the messenger of Queen Jezebel. This woman who was terrible. This woman who was a murderess. This woman who, who had taken the reins of the life of a husband and the nation. Who introduced Baal worship in Israel. She sent a messenger, go tell Elijah what he did to my prophets. I'm going to do it to him today. The Bible shows us this man of faith, this man of prayer, this man of God. He got into despair. He believed the message that he was going to be killed. And the Bible says he ran and he ran and he ran and he ran with his servant. When they got somewhere, I think it's Bethel. It's Bethel. He said, man, you guy remain here. And the Bible says he continued. Look at verse 4 with me. The Bible says in verse 4, Then he, that's Elijah, went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I have heard enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who were already died. Take my life. Take my life. Now you can tell this is not Elijah that of yesterday. The previous day he stood there like a man of God, a man of faith, and he called fire down and it came and he killed the prophets of Baal and it all went like this is a superman. The following day he's overwhelmed, he is crushed by the message, you're going to be killed today. That message shook the man of God. His faith dissipated. His faith disappeared. He started to believe. That what Jezebel said, what she was able to go to do. But when he prayed the previous day that fire must come down, Jezebel didn't do nothing to stop the fire. But the following day, she stopped the man of God himself. There he is, sitting under a broom tree, a little shrub in the desert, man. He's crying like a baby. Why? He's overwhelmed. He's under despair. He's, he's not that strong man of the previous day, a man of faith, a man of God. He's just a shamble. He's just, he's just, he's just, he's just pathetic. 
sitting under that little tree. And it's now God, kill me, kill me. That, woman, that ugly woman, Jezebel, is coming. Come on, kill me, Lord, be quick. He started to believe all kinds of things. Now, this shows the human side of these men of God. You know, when God uses you, it doesn't mean you are Superman. When God uses you for whatever reason, it doesn't mean you are Superman. You are still human. You still have some limitations. You are the Superman of God that we see in the Bible who did incredible things for the kingdom. Under despair, Paul said, we believed we we're going to die. Elijah is not believing. He's calling God to kill him because of despair. But let me comfort you, child of God. We all meet these things. We may not meet what Paul met. We may not meet what Elijah met because we didn't do what they did. But we also meet our own situations where we feel, we may feel the world is falling apart. Where we may feel, we, that's the end of me. That's the end of the ministry. That's the end of my marriage. The end of my children. The end of that business. The end of my political uh, uh, career. The end of this. The end of... It, it, it does happen. It does happen. There are churches which, are, which have closed right now. Because of COVID and all that. And the pastor is alone with his wife. The church is gone. You cannot imagine that that pastor is feeling good. He's feeling probably despair. Despair. I said we're going to talk about despair and his cure. How do we deal with despair? We must hear from God. When we, we are under this terrible situation, we must hear from God because only God has a solution for our challenges. Only God, ladies and gentlemen, has got uh, uh, answers to the things that come our way. Only God can tell. Only God can turn things around. Only God can turn things around. Let's hear what the Bible says when we are, we are under despair, when we are under this discouraging situation where we can even choose to believe there's no God no more. There's no more God. There's no Holy Spirit. There's, this word of God is not real. That's despair. And the devil is the source and the owner of despair. You understand? He attacks our humanity with it. But hear what the word of God says. Reading from verse 5, rather verse 6. Psalm 113, verse 6. It says, he stoops to look down on heaven and on earth. That's God, right? He stoops to look down on heaven and on earth. He lifts the poor from the dust. And the needy from the garbage. He sets them among princes. Even the princes of his own people. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen. Hear what God does. When, thing, when life has thrown you in the rubbish bin. When life and people have thrown you away. Saying you will never be what God said you will be. Or what you used to believe you're going to be. When life, when situations have ever put you down. Way down into the mud. The Bible says, God, Jehovah, the father of Jesus, he can come. And I'll tell you why. When does he come? He can come and pick you up. With needing nobody's permission to do that, he can pick you up. The Bible says he picks you up. He picks those who are thrown away. Okay? He, he picks them up. Look, listen to verse 7. He, he, it says, he stoops to look down on heaven and on earth and lift the poor from the dust and the needy from the government. Now, the other translation will show you that it is not just the poor in terms of material things. It means when you, everything has been taken away from you. When everything is gone, it's gone and everything is broken. All you have is pieces of broken things around you. Broken marriage, broken this, broken that, broken that. And, and you, 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 you're sitting there like a poor fellow. The Bible says, God, Jehovah, that we believe in the Father of Jesus can come and pick you up. Amen. He can come and pick you up. And I want to say to you, at this moment, I'm not in that situation, but I know you may be watching me in that situation. And I'm saying, God, Jehovah, you are God, the Father of Jesus, which is called the Almighty. He can come and pick you up. He can come and pick you up. And not only pick you up and dust you, he can pick you up. Listen, the Bible says he can pick you up and go set you and go and set you next to the princess, most next to the top people of life. 
In other words, God can come to where life has thrown you and pick you up and raise you up and change your circumstances and pay to put you at the top where the devil said you'll never see, you will never see the top. Maybe you will see it from the bottom, but you'll never be there. Where situations were shouting at you and demons were shouting and your enemies and people were shouting at you, that that's the end of you. Listen to this. God is able to come pick you up. God is able to come pick you up. And not only dust you, and not only change your situation, but he's able to pick you up and put you among the princes. When the scripture was written here, the, sitting next to the princes were the greatest thing, you know. There were people who called princes, children of the king. People who enjoyed life for free. Enjoyed prosperity for free. People who didn't need to work. People who were hired servants when they were still boys and girls to have their own servants who work for them. It was the most important position you could ever have in life. But listen to this, our God. Looking from heaven, the Bible says, he can see you. He can see you. Let me show you what God's, how God can come into your situation. When does God come to your situation and do what the, the psalmist is saying here? Let's go down to the Bible. You see, I, 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 I like it that I read you from the Bible so that you can know that I'm not talking from my own head or my own thinking. Listen to this. Second Chronicles chapter 16. Second Chronicles chapter 16, looking at verse 9. The Bible says, The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order, listen, to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Now, let's, that, that's the New Living Translation. Let's look at it from the King James Version. My God. The King James Version puts it this way. It says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself, hallelujah, God wants to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect or is trusting him. Amen. Oh, child of God, we're about to close, man. The Bible said the eyes of the Lord are looking throughout the whole world. He's looking at the whole big continents of the world. He's looking at the islands. He's looking at cities and towns. And he's looking at villages and looking everywhere. The Bible says he's looking for a man or a woman or a boy or a girl or a pastor or a leader in which in whatever capacity you are leading, he's look, he's, the Bible says he's looking for those that, whose lives or who have been thrown down there. They are now poor and needy. Everything is broken. They are surrounded by pieces of glorious days. The Bible says he's looking for those who, when they're in that situation of despair, can still trust him. Can still trust him. Ladies and gentlemen, all that God demands or is expecting of us is that when things are bad, we just trust him. Paul says when we, things were bad in Asia, we... we, we we relinquished, we, we stopped relying on our own ability. And we, all we did was just to trust God, was to rely on the ability of God. So, so, so Solomon here, the, the, the Bible shows us that the Bible says, uh, uh, God is looking for people. People who are in trouble of some one kind or another, man. And why? The Bible says he wants to see those who are trusting him when they are in, in despair. He's looking for people who can trust him when things are bad. Why? The Bible says he wants to show himself. He wants to show his strength. My goodness. He wants, he wants to step into your situation to come and show his strength on your behalf, on my behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, God says he wants to show how strong he is. Can we therefore conclude this way? That maybe God sometimes allows things. He allows things to happen to our lives. Why? So that he can get an opportunity of showing his strength on our circumstances. Friends, if I'm never sick, how do I know that God heals except just to believe it? So God can allow me to be sick so that he can show himself that he's a healer. God can allow himself that uh, the devil pushes me into a corner where he, he, he closes me in so that he can show himself as a deliverer. You understand that? 
Satan can do certain stuff and try to think that he has got me. And God can allow that. Why? So that he can come and show himself that he, the devil is limited. Friends, the Bible says God is looking for those who are, who are in despair so that he can show his strength on their behalf. He can show him, he can show them, those people who trust him when they are in, when situations are bad and there's nothing to believe on the human level, but only to trust God. And I've come to call you to trust God. He knows how to restore your things. He knows how to put your piece, the pieces of things of your life together. He knows how to do that. That's why he said, I'll pick you up and put you next to the princess. And those princes cannot kick you away. They can't get you off. Because where God put you, nobody can take you off. All that God is asking from us, when life has done things like this to us, is that we don't stay in that despair. We don't stay in that hopeless situation. Let's turn around and just believe God. Say, God, I thank you that I believe you'll take me out of this. Amen. And you just stay there and expect that to happen. God, the Father of Jesus, the creator of the world, the almighty God, he's able to come pick you, to pick me, to pick your church, to pick your marriage, to pick your business, to pick your, your career, whatever, that the devil has shattered and broke into pieces and put it together again. But all he needs is that I just trust him. I cannot fight despair. I cannot fight things. I cannot fight the, the devil. There's no scripture that says I must fight the devil. It's simply, the Bible simply says resist. All I've got to do is to resist. But God, through Jesus, broke the devil's strength and ability and gave it to the church. And I'm saying, child of God, don't despair. Don't stay there. Don't stay there. Please don't stay there. Get up and simply put your faith in God. Just say, Lord, I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how. Paul said he was believing he was going to die in his own situation. But he said he stopped relying on himself and his friends. They started to rely on you and you took them out. Fulfilling the scripture that God, when you see people who trust you, you show your strength on their behalf. And I, I empathize with you. I really empathize with you. And I want to pray, therefore, because I know God can restore. He can restore everything the devil broke. He can restore everything the devil stole. He can restore everything the devil messed up as we simply trust him. Let's pray together. Daddy, thank you. That we're not alone. Even when we're in terrible, painful situation, we're not alone. And your heart is aching, Dad. You want to show yourself on our behalf. And sometimes, rather than relying on you and trusting you, we give up. We give up. And now you have no reason to interfere and interrupt. Because you said you will interfere and interrupt and disrupt the devil's thing if we just simply trust you. You will step in our situations and change them. And I pray for that, 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 that somebody that is watching, somebody that is crying over there. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you manifest this truth of your word. Step into their life, Daddy. Restore. Put together those pieces and give them a new life, higher and better than that one that the devil broke and destroyed. I pray for this, Daddy. Because I know there are people in despair right now around the world. And I pray for them that they show them that you are their God and you are almighty. As they trust you. In Jesus name I pray. Amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you if you are watching me. And you have been listening to through audio. And you know you are not born again. Your sins are not forgiven. You are not saved. You can pray this simple prayer and get saved. Say dear Lord Jesus. I want to thank you this day. That I heard your word. And I realize I'm a sinner. And Jesus come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all my sins. And give me the power to become your son. In Jesus name. Amen. That simple prayer ladies and gentlemen. If you prayed it right now you are saved. You can also trust God. You can also call upon the Lord. And God said call me. And I will answer and show you things. You don't know. God bless you. Now, 
the next thing that you got to do if you don't have a church where you're attending is to look for a church where they teach things like this, where you can be encouraged and can be given hope again. There are many churches that can do that, but not everyone. So, but if anyone to come and fellowship with us, you're most welcome. You can come. We're just here at Chifuranani by the main road if you live around here. And you'll be most welcome, most loved, and you will see us live. God bless you until I see you next Sunday. Bye.